That's my boo boo, I think. Okay, can you hear me now, everybody? Everybody? <laughs> Jill, <laughs> you want to come back on? <laughs> oh, this happened last time I did a free challenge. I had no sound for, oh, good five, well, two minutes. I think I beat my record. I think I went six minutes without sound. I went six minutes of this broadcast on day two with no sound. Wow, I beat my record. Oh, that is so funny. I see everyone saying you can hear me now. Oh my gosh, that is too funny. Never a dull moment in my life. So the day one, I had no fast internet and I had to delay it two hours. And today I had no audio. Oh my goodness gracious. Okay, well, I will start all over again. Welcome to day two of the Chacon Challenge. Today, I was going to have two friends of mine join me. 
to say hi. And please, if you're there, Jill in New Zealand and Nikki in the USA and Arbor, Michigan, would you go ahead, please uh, join me backstage. You're welcome to join me now. These are two students of mine who are signed up early in Winter Violin Boot Camp. And I thought they would um, should make an appearance today on day two and say hi and help me demonstrate some of the preparatory exercises that we're going to cover uh, in the Baksha Moon Challenge. So if you haven't seen day one, you can check day one replay out on my Facebook page and my YouTube channel. Oh, wow, I can't believe I had no audio when I said all this. This is hilarious. So in day one, we covered the rhythm of the Shakon. We covered the structure of the Shakon. And we also covered the, um, the application of fourth double stops. Fourth double stops um, that which help you develop a great hand frame when you play the box cone. And uh, we also discussed the importance of the bass line and the harmony and why it's so important to know it when you are musically interpreting the chacon. Okay, so if you have any comments and questions about that, I will try to uh, zip through all the comments. Um, the ones that don't say we can't hear you. <laughs> I can see all that. Thank you. That is too funny. You know what it was because I have a fancy microphone. I forgot to turn on the phantom power. I think the theme of the day will be phantom power. So if, if ever you do not hear me, just type in the chat, Lynn, phantom power. <laughs> okay. All right. So today in day two, we're going to continue on with the Baksha Kong preparatory exercises. You can download this if you haven't already. Uh, if you sign up for the preparatory, uh, sorry, for the Shakon challenge. And that link I will catch right here in the chat. So if you get that link, it will be taken to a page where you're going to enter your email. And then you can download a whole practice guide, and I include the entire score. And when you do that, then you can submit your homework into the Facebook group. And your Facebook group is private. There's just us in there, Practice Ninjas. Dr. Lynn's Practice Ninjas Facebook group. And I will be in there checking out what you've been posting, cheering you on. There's some great videos coming in. So I see them coming in and they're really sounding, really sounding great. Um, when you submit homework, you can start adding up points. And when you add up points, you can put them in the spreadsheet. The instructions for that spreadsheet is in the FAQ guide, which I will put in the chat here. This FAQ guide will answer all your questions about how to win the prizes. So the prizes again, okay, one free one hour lesson with me. You get to spend one hour with me. I will coach you on whatever you want to work on. It does not have to be the box your phone. Second prize I'm giving out is access to my four online violin major courses. And they are uh, encompassing four topics that I think are very important, mastering violin technique, Mastering musicality. Many people don't address how to be more musical. Conquering performance anxiety. We'll discuss that inside my course. And practice techniques. I was never taught how to practice, so I decided to create a little course about it. So you will get that, uh, that access if you win one of the prizes. And the biggest prize I'm giving out is a scholarship to my upcoming winter violin boot camp, which is coming up pretty soon at the end of January. January 31st, it's a six week program going till March 13th, and it's going to get you into violin ninja status this winter. I'll tell you more about that on day three. Okay, so if there are no questions, I will dive into the preparatory exercises. Yes, Dick, thank you, they are good prizes, thank you. Um, okay, let me just double check, let's see. Uh, no questions, no questions, no questions. Please don't be shy about questions. And maybe the, um, the theme phrase of this day will be phantom power. Okay. You can, you can, you can make fun of me later in the Facebook group. Just write phantom power. I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. Um, oh, I need to warm up too. I hope you're warmed up. I hope you're tuned up. So what we're going to do today is, okay. So, um, I've got preparatory exercises that will build your left hand frame. We're also going to cover right hand, the chords. I had a question yesterday, and I forget who asked the question about how not to crunch the chords, okay? And there was also a question yesterday about how to have better intonation. When we discuss these double stops, this will also address how to build your 
intonation. Um, intonation, I teach a whole class on building bulletproof intonation. And what I, what I how I teach intonation is through my AHA strategy for developing better intonation. A stands for building better awareness with these two things on the uh, either side of your, your eyes, your head. Uh, H stands for building great hand frame, so good hand shape, and also good hand hygiene, meaning are you having, um, are you using good hand habits? Are, are your fingers in formation? Do you have good habits with your fingers? And also the third A is uh, audiation, so building how you pre hear pitches. So I teach all of that inside my um, Mastering Violin Technique course online. Okay, um, let's see. Okay, thank you, Elisa. The prep exercises are very useful. Thank you. Thank you for that, Elisa. I spent my uh, holidays writing them. <laughs> so I dreamt them up and created them and tried to note them as best as I could. All right. Um, and hi, Annette, nice to see you. Arg, very hard for me to read treble clef. I'm a pure alto. I, I, I feel the same about alto clef, actually. Nick, and here's Nick, another um, viola player. Question, maybe for later, how to practice the block triads with the fourth finger, yeah, reaching to the fifth for the lowest note. Okay, we will discuss that with the fifths. Okay, so day one, we talked about the fourths. Now let's warm up right now, everybody. I hope you have your instruments with me. We'll do a little play along just to warm up. Um, yes, okay, I see another question here. Ishii, thank you for trying to <laughs> warn me, Ishii. Can you remind people how to practice efficiently? Ooh, that's another can of worms that I might be not have time to cover since we have very little time. But I'll try to, to squeeze it in. But like I said, I have a whole course on that it, on in my Violin Ninja courses, and the person who wins one of the prizes will get access to how you practice efficiently. Okay, so if you have your preparatory exercises, please get them out. And bear in mind that these are just a skeleton of what you can do. I did not write all the myriad uh variations that you possibly do but let's get to the page for it right now so i will play one you play one i'll play the next you play the next okay so we'll just have a, a chance to double check intonation and a chance to set your pitch and your fingers okay and this is a nice gentle warm-up my hands are cold i don't know about yours so let's just go through it together all right and then i'm going to start challenging you so nick this will help answer your question about how to play the these chords um you're asking about those chords the four note chords with a double fifth okay all right so the first fifth i have is a flat all right so let's pick a tempo now what we are doing here okay what some of you are blessed with really great hands i can see that in the in the group okay i see that in uh, jeffrey Wu. I, I saw your video fantastic nikki mariotti you also have great left hand you can just cover those fifths i know you can do them super, super well some people like me have really skinny fingers and I need a little bit of help. For those of you have, who have small fingertips or need some help with grabbing these fifths, especially when we get to the fourth finger, the secret, um, secret sauce that I have discovered for me anyway is to think of my fingers as marshmallow tips. So that means we're thinking more squishy pads. This will really help not only in fifths, but also all other double stops so that we're not clenching and accumulating a lot of left hand tension. So when you subtract excess tension, this also helps intonation. So this is part of the answer to the question about how do we improve our intonation on double stops. Okay, enough talk, let's play. Ready? Here we go, I'm reading the fifth slide. All right, I'll play one at this tempo. One, your turn, me. Your turn. One, two, ready, marshmallow fingers. A rest. How are you doing so far? Next line or bar. Feel free to vibrate. Make a pretty sound. And that was a little bit of tune. Next bar. Your turn. Are your marshmallow fingers working? Okay, now place your finger, get ready. Lift and replace. Lift and marshmallow fifth. And next measure. Okay, now next measure, here we go. Lift. Okay, here we go, the hard one, ready? 
Got it? Got it? Oh, that one's hard. I missed that one. I sort of got it. Okay, so now that we've warmed up in one position, now I'm going to challenge you a little bit. Okay, so now we're going to start shifting. Okay, uh, shifting. So after the first after the first two measures, we're going to go into this measure here. See how it goes into the second position? You can do that, but I'm going to make it even more difficult. We're going to start shifting every single beat. Okay, this may be a little bit advanced. If this is too difficult for you, stick to your one position. Okay, so you may want to stick to... Actually, let's start with measure three. Okay, so start with measure three and start in the second position. But if you're more advanced, I challenge you to start shifting okay, between first position and second position, starting in measure three. So I'm going to start in second position. And then the next one. And then... Does that make sense? We're going to first position, second position, first position. Okay, and then we're going to do the same in the next bars. We're going to just go between first position and second position. Here we go, second position. One, two, ready, and we alternate. First position, second position. Okay, now we go to first position, second position, first position. Now we go into second position to third, oh, first position, second position. You see how I'm lifting my fingers? Okay, now pause. I talk too much. Next one. We're going to start in the, let's do first position. So it's a four. And then we're going to a three. Okay, one, two, three, first position, second position, first position. Okay, challenging, right? So these are variations. I'm just showing you many different variations that you can create. Be creative, be imaginative, challenge yourself. Now, the reason why I'm challenging myself to shift and lift and drop is because this will happen later. Okay, Jill is going to help me demonstrate that uh, on the very last page in the, in the, in the triplet. Someone had asked about the triplets, right, Jill? I know no one can hear me. Okay, uh, yes, okay, great. So we are then, any questions about the fifths before we move on to hopscotching? Okay. Okay, so Nick wants to know about measure 180, beat two. Okay, let me take a look. Take a look, Nick. 180, 180, 180, 180, 182. Yes, great, that's great. Okay, beat two. Do, 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 do. Huh, there's no fourth finger in that one. Hmm. Okay, let me circle that just for reference here so I can catch up with you. Okay. So hopscotch, what do I mean by hopscotching? Okay, so occasionally you will see that the, the fingers are, let's say in this position, the first exercise that I wrote comes from measure 15. Measure 15 looks like 15, 14, 15. Ah, okay. Okay, the very last 16th note. The bottom two uh, double stops, two and a one, it's a tritone. Now, this is uh, an exercise that I've been trying to um, encourage myself to do. When I do a hopscotch, it means that this finger is hopping over to the second finger, uh, sorry, to the D string, and this finger is hopping over to the G string. They just basically exchange places. Now the trick to doing a successful hopscotch is to keep your marshmallow fingertips again. Very soft and mellow. If you can practice all of these hopscotch exercises with the most marshmallowy, mellow action, so it's a very low, cool hopping of the string. That's how it's applied. Okay, so let's play along. Let's do another play along. Um, let's actually go ahead and play along with me. We won't go back and forth. We'll do this tempo. One, two, three, ready, and marshmallow fingers. Marshmallow. Try to keep your hopping as low and relaxed as you can. Next one. Position. Okay, 
So that's a nice thing to remind your fingers of. I do that just to make sure that I'm not popping and, and flying off and then uh, flailing back to the fingerboard. If you hop too high off the earth, you gotta come back down. Keep it really, really low and cool. So for example, if we look at, um, let me see, let me see, let me see. Let's see. Um, okay, actually, Nick, let's, let's take a look at measure 180. And I will share, why don't we share the document? Give me one second, friends. I will get this uh, score. Oh, 181, did you mean? Okay. 181. Okay. Give me one second to share this um, tablet. Aha, okay, one second. It's asking me to type in a few numbers. Uh, give me one sec. Okay, here we go. Uh, share, share, share. Okay, but can we see my tablet? Okay, let's see. I don't need my just screens a little bit. Okay. So we are looking at 180, oh, let's see. Okay, well, even if we look at 181, it is, uh, okay, so if we look at this F sharp, it has to go from this F sharp to the C sharp there. That's an example of a hopscotch right there. But if we go back two bars, um, 180, I'm oh, sorry, I'm doing the wrong bar. Okay. okay, I'm sorry. Nick, I'm getting all the bars confused. Well, let's take a look at this bar for hopscotch reasons. So let's take a, take a look at 180. Here is the, the hopscotch moment. So this, uh, 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 let's see. One has to go down there. That's one. Now, three, to hop over to the C sharp there. Okay, so now we're going to be mixing hopscotch with the slides, the double stop slides. Okay, so let's take a look. The fingers of hop are one. So one here, it's going to hop down. Nice and marshmallow. Now, the two is going to hop to so there's a lot of hopscotching here. Now let's continue. I go into second position. Now, if you remember from day one, we want to make double stops comfortable for the upper fingers. The upper finger here is the fourth finger. So let's make sure your hand is balanced over your fourth finger. So you're gonna see that, I don't know if you can see with my tablet being so big and my hand being so small, but I have a strong arch shape and my fourth finger. That's gonna be on the, on the B. And I form the third. And then I'm able to reach back with the first finger. So there is, there's the B minor part. Even with my small hand, I can reach it. For those of you who have nice large hands, it's no problem for you, I'm sure. This is a, a, a double stop slide, the next part of the, the preparatory exercises. Use your marshmallow finger to slide. From G to F sharp. There, from, from there, you're going to slide into that chord. So from this, you slide it from G to here. Okay? So let's move on to the next measure for fun. Okay, so we're actually going to the next category of double stops, right? The double stop strategy of double stop slides. How do we get from here to... I like to do a double stop slide. So from here, the twos on the job, I slide up to G, and I have a fifth. Remember how we worked on fifths? This is why. My two marshmallow, my marshmallow pad is on the fifth. 
effective way of playing this transition. Okay, long rock notes. Back to first, which is the position. Okay, we have another chord with the fourth finger again. Position your hand over the fourth finger. Your hands comfortable. If you stretch your fourth finger this way, you can hear that I'm struggling. So you see now, watch, watch what I do with, with this arm on the bone. This on the bone is going to carry the hand a little closer to my face. That delivers your fourth finger there, this way. Here, I'll stop the share so you can see a bit more clearly. This, okay, here we go, a little bit better. So, mm -hmm. what's it playing? This one. So for big-handed people, I don't think they need to do this so much as small-handed people like me, but I think of the on the bone here, and you see how the, the hand, and especially the fourth finger, is, is, is supported, it's actually riding on top of the bone. So wherever my bone goes, the hand can follow, see? Some people call it buckling of the wrist, and not necessarily. I call it uh, carrying the hand. There we go. So if you support the fourth finger by, by balancing the hand to in, um, so that the fourth finger is comfortable, this part will be more comfortable. Okay, so what does Nick say? Four, three, one for big hands, four, two, one for small hands. Good question. So anytime you have... Um, a minor, a minor uh, triad. I think four, two, one is the best. If you have a major, then I can four, three. There must be a chord somewhere in this, uh, in the chacon. If you can find it, help find it. But um, if it's minor, I definitely would do four, two, one. Even if you have big hands, but if you have small hands, definitely four, two, one. Okay. So we are covering double stop size. Let's return to your preparatory exercises, okay? So what, what I just hinted at were some slides. So wherever you can, I would encourage you to go through the Chacon and look for opportunities where there are slides. I'll give you a hint, it's right off the top, okay? So you can have it here, measure four, measure five. So this is a clever fingering that you can definitely do, measure four. Uh, one, two, three, four. Is that one? Two, three, four, five. It's not what I meant. Yes, it is. No, what I meant was actually, I want to cover, aha, 18. Pardon me, measure 18. I want to cover this one. So. Okay, here we go. This is a place where I often see people doing hopscotch fingering. Now, it's fine. I It works. However, I, I, I'm, I'd rather take the, the lazy approach and be and take the approach that uses the least amount of energy. Whenever you have to hop, you're using a lot of energy. And trust me, when I, when I'm, I, I take karate, and whenever I have to do a jump kick, it's way more energy than when I can just put, leave my body on the ground, my feet on the ground and kick while being on the ground. If you can stay on the ground in contact with the fingerboard, do so. I would prefer that I do a slide strategy. So the tritone is on a three and a two. Now, if you're a beginner, all you have to do is put your two on the F sharp and go to a G. And just practice this. And back and forth. And the thumb does not move. So, okay, that is how I do a double stop slide strategy. All right. So, I will invite my first uh, friend here, Nikki. Nikki, are you uh, ready to yeah help the help out? Yeah. Okay. So let me introduce you to my friend Nikki, wonderful musician, wonderful human being, and I hope you can hear me now, Nikki. That was so embarrassing that I couldn't hear me. <laughs> I can. <laughs> Nick and Ann Arbor, Michigan, thank you so much for helping me to to demo some of these uh, concepts. And Nikki is in my Winter Valley Bootcamp. Nikki enrolled early. 
after the races, and we discover that a lot of the Chacon techniques, including the bow techniques that we're going to cover, are in Milstein Paganiniana. So I actually have two students studying Milstein Paganiniana with me. John, John Solaninka, are you there? Say hi if you are. Okay, Thank Nikki, you. would you be able to help me demonstrate this uh, fancy double stop slide? Which which one? The one you were just talking about? Yes, yeah. please. Oh, you know what? Actually, Nikki, what are you talking about? Oh yes, that sounds great. The um, yeah, it's hard. I find it um, that that's hard to do that for me. It's harder okay. because I end up I end up running my hand. I have large. That makes as you sense. Point out, I have large hands, and, and I can sense. do it. But to do like three, um, that's another one that. That one's a little easier because getting okay. to the F sharp is hard. I can do it though. Okay. So it, it's easier than it, it is. It is a little easier than. Uh -huh. Okay. So that's that's. Thank you for pointing that out. It, it depends on the hand, everyone's hand. Yeah, everyone's hand is different. Your hand is very different from my hand. What's easy for you is very difficult for me. Actually, yeah. that's why I like actually having you on to demonstrate what it's like for a hand that's completely different from mine. Um, you know what we could also do, Nikki, actually? May yeah. I ask you to help me demonstrate chords? Some sure. of the right hand? Yeah? Okay. So we are going to be discussing right hand, how not to crunch chords. So Nikki, I'm going to ask you to help me because because you're studying Milstein, Peggy, and Yana. And I wanted, wanted what, uh, what I wanted to look at was something like, um, where is it? Where is that measure? The... Uh, the what 11 to 11 like 10 11 to that's it that's it that's it so yeah. 11 12 it's 11 12 11 12 going in from 11 oh yes okay that that part so, yeah so okay so people are asking how not to crunch these chords so right i don't want that so, if we take a look at the strings, what, what we've discovered is that, Nikki, I would love for you to show this gentle C scooping shape. We've discovered that a C scooping shape works really nicely. So, if you just do a with the open string, yes, that's it. Yes. Yeah, so if everyone can hear the quality of the brushing quality of Nikki's chord, that's exactly uh, what I'm going for. So, so if you can now do one up, one down, up, down, up, down, and that C yeah. scooping. And it's also it's also tricky if you it, some of the chords can get broken up more, like bowing wise, I yes. think, than is always in. Boeing, because sometimes when you come up, when you're coming down from, it's hard. It's hard to continue that that pressure, okay, and and to dig okay. into to, to dig in for the open G string when you're already like a you know half of the bow is already gone. Well, then, so this is what I would think of. So from here, if you, if you just think of digging in, almost like you're... You have to really... Out. Yeah. yeah, scooping out. Yeah. Okay, so Jill and I worked on this. Jill will come back. Yeah. yeah. Do you like that, Nikki? Does it feel good? Yeah. Yeah, I really like I really like the connectedness of the... Yeah. Of the I, I also the way I, connectedness makes me feel less... Jumpy? Less jumpy. Do you agree, Nikki? I do. Okay. I do. Thank you, Nikki. I think we're, I'm already over time. <laughs> so, that, Nikki, thanks so much. So, oh, the, please give a cheer for Nikki. Nikki's great. Nikki's the most wonderful musician. Nikki plays three instruments. Nikki, you play more than that, actually. Four. A little piano, too. So Yeah. yeah. Guitar, pianist, violinist. Nikki can, can, yeah, can fire off all three of those instruments. Thank you so much, Nikki. So. Thank you. All right, I got Jill coming up. Jill, would you like to join me? 
Okay, so I have Jill from Auckland, New Zealand. Hi, Jill. You're live. Hi. Hi. Jill is the most lovely violinist I've encountered. And so she's in Auckland. And um, Jill and I have been working together on audition repertoire and Bach and Paganini caprices. So Jill, uh, Jill's going to help us demonstrate the dropping of fifths. Okay, so if you were here for my Paganini five challenge, you're going to remember that we came up with the term double stop opportunities, big term. Basically what it is, is just a left hand strategy where we're getting our left hand down ahead of time. One of your homework tasks for day two is to comb through whatever excerpt you're working on and find these opportunities where you can drop multiple fingers down ahead of time. So whether you're on one string and it means your finger is on another string, that's a double stop opportunity, for example. For example, here's a double opportunity. There, that's an easy double stop opportunity. Now we're going to take a look at the very final page. Jill is going to help me demonstrate. Jill, Jill demonstrate this really beautifully, actually. Jill's going to demonstrate the ideal way of how to practice this. You ready, Jill? Okay. So what I'm talking about is measure, everybody, measure 241, 241. how I practice it over the holidays. That is no joke. So what Jill just perfectly demonstrated is exactly how I was practicing it over the holidays, believe it or not. So that's the answer to how do you how you're going to get this difficult. I find it very difficult. I don't know about anyone else. I find this variation very tricky. So you heard how Jill demonstrated putting this fourth down. This is why we practice fourths. We didn't talk about thirds, but here's a third. And here's a double stop opportunity. So you're training your hand to drop that third down. Now we're going to drop. That's another fourth. The fourth will be covered in day one. Now, today we covered fifths, didn't we? So this is how we started off the day two with warming up a fifth. You lift and drop your marshmallow finger pads on that fifth. Okay, and then you complete it with that sixth. We didn't cover sixths but in your work. You might be asked the question, what double stop strategies can I practice? And you can add to your list of fourths and fifths, slides, and hopscotch, thirds, and sixths. I just gave you the answer to your questions, okay? I'm a nice teacher. So those are the two double stops, fifth and sixth, okay? So that's a nice double stop opportunity. Even if you just have to practice this sequence a few times until you get marshmallow finger pads as well as a very soft thumb. Okay, so if you're like anything like me and accumulate any tension playing chords, what you can do is as soon as you play that chord, just double check your thumb. Uh, is your thumb getting tight? If it is, just soften it, okay? Soften it. I have a friend, Jungmin. Jungmin, she's great. She's a great violinist, and she calls it the drumstick. <laughs> okay, you can think of that drumstick being very tender. So, okay, and you're, when you have a tender drumstick, your sound starts to sound better, <laughs> more tender. Now, let's keep going. Same thing. From here, you're going to put the fourth right down instead of 
Sepultura, right? Fingers are putting the whole thing down. Same thing. Now, same thing that we did in the fifth. Drop, lift, sorry, lift the second finger and drop with your marshmallow finger pads. Lift and practice. Lift and practice. You can add that sixth. Same thing. Same thing. Perfect four. Now, here's a bit different. See my third finger ready to go, ready to go. I'm going to pop this on the fifth. This way, your drumstick is soft. Where's my drumstick? Here it is. Drumstick soft. There it is. Now, here's another fifth. There. Guess what? Here is uh, a, a double stop slide, which I have in my preparatory exercises. So, the first two fingers. chord here. Diminish on the here. These two fingers are going to slide. Practice this so that you feel very marshmallowy and soft and very suave. Keep it very suave. Here's another fifth. Now you're going to lift this. Now here, this is the finger that you're going to do the slide on. Three goes to three, and you drop the fourth finger here. The purpose of finding any place you can for slide opportunities is we're going to go back to that concept of me working too hard with my jump kicks in the karate dojo. Okay, try not to hop so much. Try to keep your feet on the ground. Try to keep your fingers on the fingerboard so you don't have to waste energy. This now, uh, G sharp. Jill, would you like to demonstrate that for us? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, everyone, please give a big hand for Jill. Thank you so much, Jill. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Yay! Oh, I have the best violin ninjas to work with. I'm so blessed. Okay, thank you so much, Jill. All right, um, now, uh, sorry about that, Annette. I can see, can't see left hands and split screen, but I appreciate the tips. Pardon me. Is there anything you want me to describe one more time so that we have more room? So here, okay, let me try this one again. This is a nice preparatory exercise. If you wanted to challenge yourself, you could even combine this double stop slide preparatory exercise with your right hand technique. So the answer to the question is of how you approach the chords. Let's try the C scooping technique. Challenge yourself. Okay, you can combine these techniques. If you want to just practice the right hand, if you're, let's say, you're no matter if you're a beginner or an or an um, advanced violinist. Oh, excuse me for the squeak. It's worth practicing this scooping. It feels very very comfortable, almost like it's a boat bobbing on the ocean wave. That's the image that I'm trying to go for, okay? Now, let me cover one more chord bow strategy for chords, for, for people who want to tackle a bit more of a, let's say a solid sound in your chord. For example, um, Chica, hi Chica, wanna say hi? Chica is studying uh, Brahms concerto with me. If you want to do that style, for example, if you want to uh, emulate Nathan Milstein uh, sharing, for example, okay, it's a bit more of a punch, right? Let's say you do want to do that style. 
let's talk about this because people want to know how you get great articulation. So uh, first of all, I love Pincus Zuckerman's description of it, which is pinch release. So that's one way of thinking about it. I know Nathan Cole talks about popcorn. I cannot do popcorn to save my life. So my method, my description, there's several ways I think about it. I like to think of the bow hairs on my bow. When they're on the string, I pretend that they're a slab of cheese, um, grilled cheese on the frying pan. And I have to wait for the cheese to melt a little bit. So you're going to see that I'm not doing anything with my fingers. I mean, I'm not pushing. Okay. You don't push cheese into the toast. Right? You don't ever need to because the cheese will melt and meet the toast. So when the hairs have a chance to melt, and then all you have to do is pull. That's one way. Okay. I'm taking notes. This, I'm giving you all the answers for your, your um, test, your <laughs> answers for the assignment. Another way I think about it is not just the, the melting cheese, but another way is to think of it as your hairs, the hairs of your bow is like a fly stuck on fly paper, you know, sticky paper, and it's just stuck. A fly or an insect can't push into the paper, it just sits, doesn't it? So you see what I'm trying to demonstrate. I'm not trying to use anything to push on the bow. The, the hairs of the bow and the weight of the bow is already sitting on my sticky paper. And then you see how I'm not using anything? Fly is stuck there. From there, I can get a clean articulation. That is how I'm going to get. See, I'm trying not to show that I'm pushing. There. So if you wanted to practice this on one single string, let's say you're on step, step one. Okay, step one is to rest the hair of your bow, the hairs of your bow on one string. I'm on a D string right now. It doesn't matter which string. And I'm just going to imagine that I'm stuck on this fly paper and I can see my attempts to wiggle the string. It's kind of going wiggle, 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 wiggle. And once you get that wiggle, there, you hear how clean that is? That's the beginning of great articulation on one string only. If you're a beginner, this is great. You got a, a consonant, pa, right? It could be softer, like a D. That's more of a D. If I want a K, I might need a little bit of um, a little bit of help with my fingers. You hear a K now? K. How about a P? Okay, I'll get a D now. Let's see if I go for something softer. Okay, so that comes from allowing the hairs of your bow to rest first. Either rest, stick on their own, and then release them from the fly paper or pry it from the, the pry the cheese away, whatever you want to think of. Now, when you're in, done that one string, then you can try two strings, okay? Resting your bow, melting the hairs, or sticking yourself to fly paper, and then release. That was a bit too harsh for my liking. So I'm just gonna find the stickiness, stickiness, stickiness. I can wiggle, 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 wiggle. That's enough. So you, you can join me on the D string and the G string. That's the beginning of chords. So this is how we're going to learn how not to crunch chords. So from here, we're going to add the A string. See how this develops? So this is step, step three. Step one is one string. Step two is two strings. Now step three is getting to the third string. Okay, so that's a chord with no crunch and a clean articulation, if you so wish that clean articulation. So here's a clean beginning of Chacon. I have sticky fly paper. Okay, the bow is resting. You see, I'm not pushing. And now I'm just gonna rest the fingers. There, that's all, all it needs. Rest, Don't, no need to push. So a common mistake is uh, pushing to get all three strings. That's a common mistake. So all you need is to rest and pull. So that's step three. Step four is to make it a full four note chord. Okay, so you see from step one to step four, you can get from six string, two strings, three strings, four strings. So whether you're a beginner or advanced, give this a try. See a nice clean cut if you so want that. If you like that style. 
personally wouldn't maybe do that for the beginning. I would like the more softened, cushioned approach. So you hear the difference how I'm doing a, a more of um, that kind of uh, articulation on the beginning of the chord. That's my more scooping approach to the chord. Okay, any questions about that? Oh, Chica says hello. Hi, Chica. Okay, Chica is also working with me. Okay, any questions on that? Uh, I know I went over time, but you know, I, I, I get excited. I always get excited when I teach. I think the people who know that about me um, uh, know that. So day three is coming in two days. And I hope you're excited for day three because I will be choosing one person from inside the Facebook group to join me live to get live feedback from me and my surprise guest and how you could be considered for this opportunity. I hope you're going to put your name in the hat is if you post inside the Dr. Lynn's practice ninjas, Facebook group, tag your post with hashtag masterclass. And I will tap on that masterclass hashtag and see who has submitted themselves to be considered and whoever displays great spirit, motivation to learn, um, a willingness to improve, I will be contacting you. Okay, you will hear from me, a private message on Facebook. Okay, so let's see if there's no other questions. I wish you luck in the homework. Be sure to tag me via Lin Kuo on Instagram, Lin Kuo Violin on Facebook. Um, earn points by commenting on my Facebook or Instagram posts or my YouTube videos. Uh, posting inside the group, posting on Facebook uh, uh, publicly, or subscribing to any of my channels on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Once you earn all your points, you can tally up your points, put it in the spreadsheet, uh, put it in a one place and then put the link into the spreadsheet. And I will be tallying up those points and announcing the prize winners. You have until 10.30 a.m. on Friday, January 14th to earn your points. And then I will be counting the points that morning just before I go live with my surprise guest. Wait till you see. Okay, so, all right. I see some uh, comments that was especially helpful about the chords at the beginning. Oh, great, good, good, good. I'm so happy. Let's see. Thanks, Annette. Oh, you figured out how to change your name. Great, so you're not, you're not just A, you're Annette. Thank you. It's nice to have violists join. Another violist, Nick, what are your feelings on the balance between using a modern instrument and using ideas from historically informed performance? Okay, I, that, that's a really good question. Well, I, I mean, I come from Toronto where we have a really great new music, um, new music enthusiastic community. We have Tafel Music, one of the pre premier pre period performance orchestras in the world. So I do not study Baroque and early music, unfortunately, but I have been influenced, let's say, by the culture in this city and in that that kind of aesthetic. So I I would consider myself middle of the road personally. I have a modern instrument. Um, the bridge is is more curved, right? Because I think you know the, the bridge probably was a little bit um, less curved, so it was easier to get all all the four note chords. So we're, we're, yes, it's difficult to make everything period performance if you don't have the baroque bow and that instrument set up in that way. Um, who was it that actually had a special bridge created um, for their solo Bach recording? I forget who it was now. Um, that question we can ask for to our surprise guest on day three. That answer will be um, easy for that person to answer. <laughs> um, so I do my best to emulate emulate the period performance um, performers, but uh, I would consider myself not old school and not completely period performance. I'm definitely in the middle. Um, you can ask me who my favorite performers are in, inside the Facebook group, and I'll share you share with you some of those those performers who I think are middle of the road. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. Okay, all right. So thank you so much for joining me today. Apologies for the um, <laughs> no sound. I did that last time. Okay, so if, if you have any questions for day three, submit them in the Facebook group, and we'll take a look. I'll take a look, and that way the surprise guest will be able to see them too. Okay. Thank you so much. Have a great Wednesday and I will see you in two days.